Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. It is day four of my little 30 day video series. I'm not sure why I'm doing 30 days because technically there's 31 days in December. So that does seem a little bit strange, but today you get to have an update on the water box. And as you can see, it looks awful again. This tank has punished me for a long, long time now, but with your help, I am going to fix it. I will not be defeated. So. Today, I will give you an update on the new fish that went into there, that came out of the quarantine tank. And I will also, uh, you can see that the tank is covered in brown. I want to know exactly what that brown is. Is it diatoms, dinoflagellates? Interestingly, originally the sand, as you saw in the previous video, it was covered in cyano. I siphoned out most of the cyano, and this brown stuff has come back. So something different has taken over. So we're gonna get the microscope out and we'll have a look at that. Uh, I'm going to feed the fish and I'll give you a little update on them and, um, and we'll go from there. Right now, before I show you the fish, this is what my life has become recently. So the house was decorated for Christmas yesterday and you can see that already I have these passive aggressive warning signs on uh, any Christmas stuff. And I have no doubt that many of your partners will understand this because so many of us use non-fish related stuff for fish related purposes. This was actually the original one. And to be fair, it does actually work. So these are not approved fish scissors and these ones are approved fish scissors. And you can see the reason that there has to be some differentiation is because these scissors keep going rusty. Right now, this is the state of the water box on day four. Now, I don't believe anyone that watches the channel can look at this tank and think to themselves, I just can't understand why Ryan hates this tank so much. I have never had a tank which has been this much of a punishment. A couple of days ago, you would have seen that I siphoned everything off the sand bed. It was mostly cyano originally. Now I haven't put ChemiClean in, which is interesting because what's actually happened is the cyano has mostly gone, but it is being replaced by something brown. Now, without looking through a microscope, I don't know what this is yet, but we're gonna do that together. My bet is that it's diatoms, but it could also just as easily be dinoflagellates. So we shall see. And it'll be interesting because obviously they both have different solutions to them. Now, with regards to the cyano, I haven't actually used ChemiClean yet. And the reason for that is because obviously with adding the new fish, they have already been exposed to so many different chemicals that I didn't want to give them yet another thing for their system to deal with. So I've decided I'll let the cyano do what it needs to do at the moment, and then I will ChemiClean it probably in about a week's time. Now, with regards to the fish, the Convict Tang, I would say, has probably fed best since it's been introduced. It does have one little dark mark under its fin on the other side, not this side, it's when it turns around, there, you can see. Now, the reason for that is because the Yellow Tang and the Convict, when it first went in, were fighting each other. Not hugely, there was actually very, very minimal aggression between them, which I've, I've actually pleasantly surprised by because I thought she would be an absolute pain in the ass. However, she still has a chance to be a pain with regards to the powder blue. Now the powder blue, is, as, as you can see, is quite a bit smaller than her. I am very, very glad that I put him in this box. And the reason for that is he was very thin when I put him in the tank. In quarantine, they actually get fed a lot. The fish that are in the quarantine tank that you saw yesterday actually get, I think, eight cubes a day, as well as nori and flakes and pellets and live food as well. So you can tell that I'm not not feeding them. What's actually happening is copper suppresses their feeding response and I also assume that it does something to their digestive system as well. This fish, however, having been in this box, has almost immediately fattened up. All of them actually look slightly thin when I put them in here, which I thought was interesting because I wonder if the copper is making them swell up and then once they're, once they're out of the copper, they lose that swelling and then obviously you can start to see some of their, their bones again. But having been in here a couple of days, they get fed a huge amount. This is actually their second feed of the day, which is a mix of brine shrimp, mysis. Uh, they've had nori, pellets, flake. Now all of the fish are eating with the exception of the flame angel, which is a real shame because the flame angel was absolutely superb on day one. You can see the blenny here. The flame angel was absolutely superb on day one, and that seems to be the fish that has, has taken the copper the hardest. Interestingly, it was still eating completely fine all the way up 
until the 30th day of quarantine. And then for some reason, the last couple of days, he just hasn't eaten anything. And I'm not entirely sure why. Occasionally he will go to try to peck the food and he, ah, that was actually, he just took a bite of something. So that might, that may very well be the first thing that he's eaten. Oh, I didn't actually see what it was. I'll have to watch it play back. But he's definitely, before he was absolutely hammering the food. Whereas now he seems to be very, very like hesitant with regards to go for it. Sometimes he goes to grab a piece, but doesn't actually eat it. So of all the fish, this is the only one that I'm actually concerned with at the moment. All of the other ones are doing really, really well. And you can see that he is also slightly thin. So I know flame angels don't take copper very well, but it just seems weird that he was eating everything in the quarantine tank. You take him out of the quarantine tank and all of a sudden he literally is not eating anything at all. Now don't worry that it appeared that powder blue tank didn't get any food. Usually the food actually goes into his acclimation box at the moment. And then after that it falls through the holes and then the other fish get. So he has actually been getting more food than the rest of them. But I've still got some nori to go in. So I like to uh, crush it up for him because he's, he definitely will eat it if it's in pieces much better. You can see he's so tame now that he's not even overly worried about my hands being in here. Now the chances are I will probably release him tonight, again, when it's pitch black. And the reason for that is there's, I don't wanna keep him in this box for any longer than necessary. And now that he's got over the, uh, the copper and he's eating and he's actually back to being like fat and healthy again. And he really is fat because he's had, he's, he gets access to all the food before the others. There's no reason to keep him in here. So I will, um, I'll be releasing him tonight and then tomorrow, hopefully, everything will be all smooth. In the quarantine tank, there was a minor, minor issue with regards to the convict tank, but hopefully in a, in a much bigger tank, obviously this tank is probably eight times the size of the quarantine tank, hopefully he will be as good as gold. Now, an interesting thing that I've taken away from quarantining the fish this time is that quarantined fish aren't necessarily healthier fish. Now let me clarify, before people type away in the comment section angrily, the copper obviously is not good for them, it is a poison. And the fish will be disease free, but that doesn't mean they are healthier. And I'm considering actually changing the way that I quarantine fish so that it, there is an observation period at the end. Now I have a feeling that when companies quarantine fish, they don't go from a system which has copper and medication in direct to the customer. They probably go from that system into a clean system, which is like a holding system for them to recover essentially and get feeding. And then after that, they get sent out. Now those fish will be healthier or they will have a, a better chance of survival than a fish which comes straight out of the ocean and goes into your tank but fish that are coming straight out of a quarantine medicated system and going straight into the display tank where all of the other fish have the ability to attack them if they want, they have to compete for food, they might not be feeling great. I'm not sure that that is the best way of doing it. So I, I think that going forward, there is a possibility I will add an observation tank to my quarantine method just to allow the fish a week essentially to recover. Right now, that is it for today, guys. Originally, I said that we are going to find out what the brown stuff is, but you're going to have to wait one more day and we will do it tomorrow. And the reason for that is my microscope is in a room upstairs and my partner is currently at a meeting, so I can't get it for you now. So, one day, one day extra, and you get to find out what the brown stuff is. Plus, you know, when you've got 30 days of videos to make, I'm gonna run out of content eventually, so I don't think one extra day is too much. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Also, Christmas is coming. And those of you in the UK, there are gift cards available on the website. So if you don't want to get socks for Christmas, tell your partners what you want. But remember, be nice to them. Don't use their stuff.